Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. This week we are taking a look at the much overlooked but very, very versatile cargo container. You know, crates, cargo containers, the big metal things that turn up on ships that are shipped over from China and other places that do mass production and dumped off on our shores so we can basically enjoy the wonders that Jeff Bezos and his ilk chuck to us every day on Amazon. Just you can use these big metal structures for all kinds of stuff. And yes, it also works very, very nicely in your tabletop gaming. Whether you're doing a cyberpunk future or whether you're doing a gritty crime drama, a chunky metal cargo container can really add some depth to it. You can do dozens of them all stacked up or one or two of them converted into shops or converted into domiciles. These things look great, and if you have them on your tabletop, they really, really work nicely. And yes, you can go out and buy them from Games Workshop or a dozen other model gaming companies, but you're a 3D printer and a 3D printing enthusiast, so go ahead and print yourself some wonderful, wonderful 3D printed either futuristic or contemporary cargo containers. And yes, we're going to do three different variations today, three small ones, a large chunky modern one or a futuristic one and links in the description below for the wonderful makers who've made these fantastic containers before we do however don't forget to like and subscribe we're well over the thousand now and heading to almost 1100 so if you haven't subscribed now's the time to drag your cursor down find the subscribe button give that a click click the like as well and click the bell button Congratulations and welcome to the 3D Printed Soup Cargo Container Enthusiast Society. Our motto, buy them cheap and stack them high. Now let's go and get ourselves some cargo container goodness. Let's give this a try. Okay, let's start with a series of uh, three sci-fi um, boxes. These I got the inverse from this maker right here. And yeah, they're printing out really nicely. As you can see, one of them has come slightly unfastened from the uh, printer bed, but hopefully that should be fine. Okay, let's uh, remove some of the support material. These print fairly well without support material, but I just put um, a couple of very, very light pieces in there just to make sure the edges came out uh, sharply. Talking about sharp, I am using cutters here. If you're gonna use cutters to uh, clean up your 3D prints, make sure you're very, very careful because you can really, really hurt yourself with those. And yeah, make sure you're wearing goggles or glasses to make sure you don't get any of the bits in your eyes because they do tend to ping off and you don't want to lose an eye to uh, a piece of rogue filament. Right, okay, next up, let's print ourselves off a standard uh, cargo container. This is gonna be sort of your generic uh, red blue yellow or green cargo containers that you see in uh, most container um, warehouses or uh, container yards but yeah these can be used for anything from sort of superhero games through to sort of street games to um, sci-fi and cyberpunk they're very very versatile and you can use them for anything from cover to uh, domiciles to uh, places where people can have set up shops i mean these things are as versatile as the uh, actual cargo containers that people can sometimes choose to live in and yeah they make a really really good piece of background or cover for your sort of shooting or uh, sci-fi adventure games right with the uh, standard cargo container printing off uh, we're gonna move on to printing a uh, more sci-fi looking cargo container same dimensions as the uh, standard cargo container but less square and uh, sort of less angular this thing is more sort of a, a hexagonal shape and it's got some sort of ladders on the side and airlocks at the end and yeah this is going to be um, a lot more for sort of like your sci-fi and cyberpunk adventures more than your sort of like true crime or sort of horror adventures but yeah still absolutely fantastic and this one is printed at about 10 percent so it's not gonna be too heavy and use up too much filament you don't need to basically print these things solid you can print them with a very very hollow core and they'll still turn out absolutely fine while i was uh, investigating cargo containers i actually found a uh, file for what's called a hauler or a, so a cargo hauler and it's a big sort of multi-wheeled land train thing where you can basically put um, cargo containers on it and i thought you know what i can't miss out on that so i'm going to print myself off one of these as well maybe two or three amount of stuff sort of a land train to take these uh, modern day and futuristic uh, 
cargo containers and uh, see if we can't make it into some really really cool awesome terrain so it comes with six big wheels and a nice sort of flat deck for it to sit on so uh, let's get that print and see how that turns out as well right with that finished let's give these an undercoat and uh, just go over this with some sort of standard silver uh, i'm going to do a few tricks on these to make them look cool but first of all we've got to make sure that we uh, have a layer of paint so that the rest of the spray paint adheres to the models because yeah if you just paint straight onto um, 3d printed models the paint usually flakes off or at least it's not strong enough to basically hold it on there so if you uh, do bang it around at all the paint chips quite easily and if you're using this as sort of war game uh, terrain um, yeah you'll probably be putting it in a box for other stuff so uh, yeah you want the paint to be as hard wearing as possible and I've said this before and I'll say it again if you're using spray paint well ventilated room or outside and uh, make sure you're wearing a mask because yeah this uh, foundation spray paint or uh, undercoat spray paint is fairly toxic and you don't want to bring that into your lungs too often right okay and time for a little trick uh, if you are um, painting one of these or painting anything which has sort of flat color but you want it to look old and chipped just get a bit of toothpaste any toothpaste will do um, maybe maybe not aqua fresh or anything with sort of stripes in it but just your normal white toothpaste and just apply it just in little dots and drabs on the edges and wherever you think the paint might be tripped or worn um, just put blobs on there doesn't matter the size of the blob doesn't matter how big or small it is as long as it covers up some of it and just rub it in with your fingers and uh, then just leave it to dry for a few minutes Once the toothpaste is dry, apply the top colour and then once that's uh, almost dry, just use your nail and just scrape off all the places where you uh, put the toothpaste and this makes absolutely lovely chipping effects. If you just paint silver paint on to make a, a chipping effect, it looks wrong because you're putting something over the top of it. Whereas if you've got some nice undercoat under there, like a silver that I used, and then just scrape away the paint, the bits with the uh, toothpaste won't uh, adhere to the undercoat and just come straight off. And there you go, you get these lovely sort of chipping peeling effects that you get on old metal, sort of like rusted cargo containers and the like. Also works really well on sort of pipes and uh, any kind of gantry which has got one colour but you want the undercoat or the metal underneath to be showing nicely. And yeah, there's a great little tip for making metal look really, really awesome and aged. Okay, with that done, let's have a look at these sort of three examples of uh, cargo containers and see how they've turned out and whether or not uh, they look as cool as I think they will. Let's give this a look. Well, yeah, these turned out very, very well. And as you can imagine, 3D printers absolutely excel at printing sort of chunky, 
box shaped things it's kind of like the best thing that they're used for i mean you can use a 3d printer for chucking out all kinds of figures and detailed things but but when it comes to printing out a stackable metal storage box 3d printers really excel but what's the most important part of any 3d print that's right the what you do with it afterwards and in this case painting cargo containers is what really gives them their personality and makes them look less like a standard utilitarian box and more like a piece of the actual terrain or piece of the sci-fi or a modern world that you are actually creating and yeah as I say the toothpaste trick which I showed in the video just makes these things turn out beautifully all the lovely chips and dents on them and this is your standard one and you've got your futuristic one which uh, is a lovely sort of uh, hexagonal shape nice almost gated effects either side and I like the ladders to lead you to the top so basically you can have your, your guys climbing up and down them you can stack dozens of these together or you could do a whole field of just loads of these just out there and have sort of a shootout all the way around the cargo containers literally the options are endless when it comes to these things and they look really great on the battlefield although my favorite ones are these ones i mean they look like standard boxes and they are but you can pop the ends off these ones and they're hollow so you can have them sort of open you can use them as tunnels you can attach loads of those together and have them as tunnels or you can sort of put one end on and sort of use it as sort of a, a little sort of mini shop or somewhere where basically someone can hide you, you can basically put uh, extra ammo it's really really lovely and yeah that's i think that's probably one of my favorite designs that i found and yeah, while I was printing these out, I was digging around some of my old files and I found this from Digital Taxidermy. Long-term viewers of the uh, channel will know I have had a few uh, files sent to me by them and they are a really, really great company. And yeah, this is from their construction equipment and vehicles section. And yeah, it makes a very, very nice sort of cargo hauler. And you imagine sort of three or four of those with an engine at one end and uh, you can make yourself a big sort of land train to go with your Necromunda stuff and um, look very very nice with the uh, latest Necromunda ash waste set or something like that yeah this is very very cool and I love the way that the, the wheels actually spin and these print out like that they just you print the wheels out and the wheels spin straight off the build plate so yeah absolutely uh, love these and say my love affair with the cargo containers continues. One day I'll buy a cargo container and maybe make a studio in it. But until that time, I'm very happy with these uh, little additions to my Necromunda and uh, Gasland sets. Thanks for watching 3D Printed Soup. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Links to the files I've used today in the description below. And if you do use them, make sure that you uh, upload and make and put a uh, photo on Thingiverse. Stay happy, stay safe, keep printing.